Hi everyone from CBC and anyone else who's tuning in. I just wanted to share a few things about prayer books. During this COVID-19 situation, some of us have a little bit more time on our hands, a little bit more time at home than we normally do. What a great opportunity to do some reading. And if we just narrow that down a little bit, not just to do quality reading, but to read some excellent books on prayer. It would be difficult to quantify how many Christian books have been written on prayer over the centuries. Only the Lord would really know how many. But um, I just want to talk about a few. I'm currently reading this one by Tim Keller on prayer. Uh, some of my old favourites I've found to be very good. The Kneeling Christian. Uh, no one actually knows who wrote it. It's an anonymous author. Excellent little book. Uh, Praying High, just an inspiring story about a missionary to Pakistan in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Then Leonard Ravenhill's Revival Praying. That's a personal favourite. Dick Eastman, three books on prayer combined into one. There is just so much to read. I'm sure that some of you have your own personal favourites when it comes to prayer. I just like to just pause and just think about four of the books that I would see as real standouts. Four books I would really highly recommend. Just stand there, pray something. A really handy little book, so easy to read. I would highly recommend it. One of the endorsers on the back of the book says, this is not only the most encouraging book I've ever read on the subject of prayer, it is quite simply one of the best books I've ever read. It is so readable. I just had a look on Kurong's website and this book is going quite cheap for only $7. And it's an interesting story because back in 1972, Donald, Ronald Dunn was pastoring a church and he preached for three months on the topic of intercessory prayer. The next year, 1973, he wrote this book, but then he set it aside for 15 years. And it was published later on, and this edition here is 1992. And so I would just highly recommend this book. It's very readable, very encouraging. Um, I read this a number of years ago and just found it one of the most encouraging and inspiring books on prayer. So I'd highly recommend this one. Don't just stand there, pray something. The next book is this absolute classic, With Christ in the School of Prayer by Andrew Murray. This book is in the Hendrickson Christian Classic series. And if you, I mean, prayer is a very broad subject, but if you just want to really narrow yourself down to some of the things that Jesus said, Jesus' cutting edge teachings and statements about prayer, then this is a great book. It's a real gold mine. A lot of practical advice in there. I just love this quote from page 118. Andrew Murray said, He who would work must pray. It is in prayer that the power for the work is obtained. This is a great little book I'd highly recommend. All right, number three, if I could just recommend one book on prayer only, if there was just the opportunity, and of course we all have our favorite books, but if someone said to me, you're only allowed to recommend one book on prayer, which would it be? I would go with this one, Mighty Prevailing Prayer by Wesley Jewell. Excellent book, written in 1990. And if you go to the foreword, Armand guess when the founder and director of Re Revival Prayer Fellowship said this, this book will wake you up for prayer and motivate you to be your best for God. And it's not an overstatement. This is one of the most inspiring books you can possibly read on prayer. Leonard Ravenhill, who himself wrote some excellent stirring material on prayer, said of this book, quote, it should be a lifetime manual for the serious student of the prayer life. Even just some of the headings are enough to make your mouth water. It's a book of only around 300 or so pages, but there are 44 chapters packed into there. And here's some of the chapter headings. Prevailing prayer, the need of the church. Prayerlessness is sin. Chapter nine, the dynamic of desire. Chapter 10, the dynamic of fervency. Chapter 19, God honors united prayer. Oh, we need to read that. Mighty prevailing prayer by Wesley Jewell. The fourth book I recommend on prayer is this absolute classic, The Complete Works of Ian e. Bounds on Prayer, which to be fair is actually eight books joined into one. You can still buy this as a unit or you can buy them as individual books. And the titles include Power Through Prayer, Purpose in Prayer, The Essentials of Prayer, The Necessity of Prayer. E.M. Bounds, it says in the introduction here, written not by him but by someone else, that he would typically get up at four o'clock every morning to be alone with God in prayer, usually praying until 7 a.m. He himself was a man of prayer, so he's not just writing theory or writing in an abstract sense here. He really uh, lived this and the, he covers uh, critical areas such as prayer and faith, 
Prayer and Desire. There's a chapter on prayer and missions. He has a lot to say to preachers, and that's so useful if you're preaching the Word of God, not just to be reading books on preaching, but reading books on prayer uh, to do with preaching. And Ian Bounds really hits the mark there. I'll just read to you a, a quote from his chapter on prayer and faith. He says that prayer projects faith on God and God on the world. Only God can move mountains, but faith and prayer move God. He goes on to say that the faith which creates powerful praying is the faith which centers itself on a powerful person. I would highly recommend the writings of Ian e. Bounds on prayer. We all, of course, have our personal favorites. Uh, for what it's worth, after the Word of God, I would rate this book in the top five books I've ever read on any subject. It is so encouraging, so readable, written in the late 1800s, early 1900s, but still so easy to read, good, clear English, and truly inspiring. I highly recommend anything written by Ian e. Bounds on the subject of prayer.